Gary, Oxford United this weekend, but just before we, we talk about that one, just touching on Tuesday night for the final time, I know you said that you wanted the players to learn from it, and what's the reaction, particularly from those younger players, been since that game? Yeah, I spoke to the younger group again this morning uh, to speak to them about how you recover. I think we're fortunate as, as a club that we can fall back on last season. The first team had a, a humbling experience at Portman Road. We have recovered extremely well from that because we've taken accountability and we've tried to do something about it and how we behave and how we change behaviours. So I spoke to the lads again this morning. I spoke to them about, I don't want to see uh, people being down. I, I don't want to see people moping about. I want to see people with a attitude of uh, determination to be better and to improve. So uh, for me, it's, it's behind us now. They will you know, look in detail with their coaches and analyse certain actions they have to improve. But uh, overall, you know, it's, it's behind the group and we move on. Small wins. James Scott back and started that game. How good is it to have another attacking option back in the ranks? Yeah, it's good for all the, the first team players that played that needed minutes. They, you know, it was important they got that and they came through that unscathed. So it gives us more options for the, the game on Saturday. So that, you know, was the small positive from a, a difficult night. And towards the end, uh, the game was well gone, but we did see Sonny Cox playing in a wider role and, and there was glimpses there that, that there could be something there for him. Is that something you, you've looked at? Yeah, it's something he'd done at uh, Carlisle when he came on. I thought it was his best performance of the season where he played as a, a number 10 in, in, in wider areas. So he has that versatility where he can play for me any position across the front. And when we play, we're front three. Uh, so... Yeah, it's good for him to get minutes. He, uh, he needed the 90 minutes in his legs as well, so it's important that he came through that as well. Taking a look now at availability of players who we know have been injured, there's a further update on Emmy. Emmy, yeah, he's seen the specialist. They're still, we're still debating what course of action he takes. He, takes. he could have a conservative approach and, and manage it with the physios, which... Is, you know doesn't have a high success rate but is a much shorter time he could get it operated on which is a really good success rate but it takes a lot longer so uh, that's with me the physios and myself we're discussing that at the moment I think the best thing for us at the moment is to support me it's obviously a difficult time when any player gets injured but when you come to a new club uh, you've started so well and then you have that setback it's you know mentally it's really difficult for him so the most important thing then now is we support Emmy uh, to help him and then hopefully make the right decision uh, and have the right course of action to get him back as strong and as, as fit as he can possibly be as quick as, as we can. Dion Rankin? Dion's still at Chelsea. He's progressing really well. He's had injections. They think he's ahead of schedule uh, and hopefully they want to manage the early part of his rehab and hopefully we get him very soon to, to get him back out in the grass and, and get him amongst the boys. But uh, again, a big player who you know started the season so well at a, diff a new club for the first time he'd been on loan. Uh, so important that we get him back from a social aspect first and foremost, and then hopefully get him back in the team soon as well. Jack Aitchin hasn't featured since that collision against Steven Hitch, but it wasn't actually that, that that's kept him out, but he, he's not far away. Yeah, the, the concussion was uh, what kept him out of the Reading game and then he ha had already pencilled in an operation on his hernia, which he had been carrying since the first game of the season pretty much. So incredible what he's done in terms of performance levels carrying an injury, but it was important that he got that fixed and hopefully when he comes back, uh, he'll come back to even better than he was before because he, he's had an amazing start with the club and... Uh, it's really important when we get him back, he's 100% he's ready to go and, and impact the group again. Check your bar It's still going. Yeah, unfortunately. It's getting short though, it's getting short. Check's, uh, Check's managing his foot at the moment, but still waiting on a, another opinion from specialists. So he's, he's trying to train, but any time he does, uh, it flares up. So he has to uh, rest and, and try and recover it. But, uh, you know, that can't, he can't sustain that. So. We're looking at getting other opinions from specialists and seeing if there's anything we can do with that. Ads, Harry and Vinny are not these. far off though, are they? Ads is close, just had a, a little bit of a problem with both calves, just for the work that he'd been doing. Uh, Katie and Vinny are both trained fully this week, so they're the good news. The list will be shorter by next week, hopefully. Um, on to Oxford then, I think 
People have said we, we've surprised this season. I think Oxford have as well. They had a really tough season towards back end of last season, but it, I mean, it could be a hell of a game if both keep, both teams play as well as they have been. Yeah, I think they've played well. I think they are a, a bigger team in this league. They have a, a, a big budget that, you know, I think last year was a surprise when they struggled uh, so much with the squad that they had. So this year, I think they're probably back in a, a position that you would expect them to be. But it's a game that, you know, we believe will be difficult. It's a challenging game, but I think we've shown that we can go to Wickham, we can go to Carlisle, we can win on the road and, and we know what that takes. So we're really looking forward to, to another big challenge. And they score a lot of goals as well. And given that we've conceded the least in the division, there's two contrasts there which could match up quite well. Yeah, I've had a look at them. They're, they're uh, more pragmatic than I thought they would be. I thought they'd be more expansive. I think the manager when he was at MK Dons was a very expansive uh, coach. He wanted the team to play total football and from that experience it looks like he's he's tightened up a little bit and they don't commit as many men as he thought. They don't overplay uh, in their own half. So uh, we've looked into them. We, we know uh, what they are good at and how they are going to hurt us. Uh, but we also believe, like I said, every game we believe that we can uh, cause the opposition a lot of problems and go and win no matter where we play. Uh, and just finally, will your team selection for this match have one eye on Tuesday against Luton? No, none at all. We we have a, a, a big team mentality that we've worked on with the staff, with the players. There's five principles within that and one of them is the next game is the most important. So we don't take our eye off... Uh, the next game and the challenge that that brings, no matter what games are coming after, we put full full focus on, on Oxford and then after that we'll, we'll start to think about Luton.